Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Paseo Podcast. We've been uh, on a little vacation, uh, but we missed you all. If you don't already follow us, keep up with us at Paseo Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you want to follow me, I'm at JS DeLeon on Twitter. Uh, that's J-S-D-E-L-E-O-N. You can also pitch a story or volunteer with the podcast by reaching out to us on our website, baseomedia.org. To watch the interview portions of our episodes, check out our YouTube channel. Just type in Baseo Podcast and we'll pop right up. While you're there, like our videos and subscribe to our channel. Help us get to 100 subscribers, por favor. We'd really appreciate that. For this week's episode, we're doing a little something different. No interview, just a little Puerto Rican history lesson. This past Tuesday was National Borinquenier's Day, so we're going to answer the question, who were the Borinquenier's? Okay, let's talk about the Borinquenier's. Now, I put together this information from a, a number of different sources, so I want to give credit to those. Um, I found an unnamed documentary on the Borinquenier's. I'm sure there is a name out there, but the clips I was able to find had no label on them. So I know they're a part of a really good documentary. I just can't find it. But if I had to guess, it's probably called the Borinquenier's. I also took information from NPR and the Center for Puerto Rican Studies. So credit to them for helping me craft uh, this little uh, history lesson for you all on who the Borinquenier's were. This past Tuesday, April 13th, was the first ever National Borinquenier's Day. The day came about after the U.S. Congress voted to override a veto by then-President Donald Trump on a defense bill that also created a national holiday to honor the Borinquenier's. The Borinquenier's were the 65th Infantry Regiment in the U.S. Army, the only Latinx infantry of its kind. The Puerto Rican infantry, the Borinquenier's, comprised largely of Boricua soldiers and was named after the pre-colonial Taino name for Puerto Rico, Borinquen. Members of the 65th Infantry fought in World War I, World War II, and in the Korean War. The Borinquenier's originated in the form of a battalion of Puerto Rican volunteers on May 20th, 1899, in the aftermath of the Spanish-American War. They were regarded as colonial troops, part of the first, quote-unquote, American colonial army. By 1908, the unit officially became part of the U.S. Army and was known as the Puerto Rican Regiment. As I mentioned before, the Borinquenier's served in World War I. The regiment was sent to the Canal Zone in Panama to protect the U.S. In 1920, the unit's name changed from the Puerto Rican Regiment to the 65th Infantry Regiment. In World War II, they served in North Africa and Europe, but not as frontline troops. Military authorities kept the Borinquenier's far from the front line as the military followed a policy of racial segregation in which combat roles, with a few exceptions, were reserved for white troops. These non-combat assignments meant that the Borinquenier's suffered very few casualties throughout that war. This also resulted in something I found to be really interesting, as the Borinquenier's underwent all kinds of training while being kept from combat, and by World War II's end, the 65th was a supremely trained and well-disciplined combat regiment. After World War II, the U.S. military began to shrink as the Army demobilized service members. On June 24, 1950, War broke out in Korea and the U.S. military was unprepared and hit setback after setback. The Borinquenier's were then mobilized and ordered to Korea to provide reinforcement. This meant the Borinquenier's were going to war as first-line combat troops as part of the Army's 3rd Infantry Division. To put this in perspective, the majority of the 61,000 Puerto Ricans who fought in the Korean War came from La Isla and served with the Borinquenier's. The chance that they may be sent to the 65th Infantry motivated thousands of Puerto Ricans to volunteer for service both in the United States and on La Isla. The newspapers in Puerto Rico were filled with stories and pictures of the soldiers and there were ceremonies held before their departure. La Isla's press wrote about the Puerto Rican soldiers and what their actions meant for Puerto Rico on a daily basis. Throughout the war, Governor Luis Muñoz Marín often made reference to the men of the 65th in his speeches. The crest of the 65th Infantry was displayed in public buses and train cars. Plazas and avenues were named to honor them. Returning soldiers, especially the wounded, were received as heroes and treated to public receptions by government officials. Governor Muñoz Marín attended the burials of the fallen soldiers and sent his recorded speeches to the troops in Korea. While the Borinquenier's received acclaim in Puerto Rico, 
Their members endured years of unfair treatment and discrimination while fighting for the United States. As I touched on earlier, they had to fight on two fronts. On one end, they fought opposing forces in Korea, and on the other, they had to fight discrimination, oftentimes coming from military leadership. Here's a clip from a documentary on the Bodinganiers that gives an example of how military leadership looked at them at the time. Its commander was a West Point graduate, William W. Harris, who later recalled how he felt when first appointed to the 65th. I was outraged, he said, at what I considered being sent to pasture for two years to command what the Pentagon brass referred to as a rum and Coca-Cola outfit. But Commander Harris soon came to speak of the men of the 65th in glowing terms, saying they were the best soldiers he had ever seen and that he was prepared to go with them into any battle with anybody. Being in the military is tough enough as it is. And I can only imagine what these men had to go through fighting for a country and leaders that looked at them as second-class citizens. As many BIPOC people have to do, they had to prove themselves two and three times over in order to be seen as equals. Despite the racism and discrimination the Borinqueneers faced, they dedicated and sacrificed their lives to fighting for the U.S. Here's the proof. Throughout the conflict, 3,540 Puerto Ricans became casualties of the war, of whom 747 were killed in action. Let that sink in for a second, because that makes the Korean War the deadliest war in Puerto Rican history. The role of the Borinqueneers in Korea was as important as the Navajo Code Talkers, Tuskegee Airmen, and Nisei Regiment's role in World War II in destroying racial prejudices holding that non-whites were inferior men, unfit for combat, and undeserving of equality and self-determination and self-rule. Some people in the U.S. recognize the significance of their service too. Here's a clip of a Borinqueneer, Sergeant First Class Pablo Delgado, um, sharing his experience coming back home from the Korean War. Llegó, y llegamos a San Francisco, de Jerez, Corea. Además de las escalletas, las donas, y este, eso, había hasta besos, porque la, la esposa de los, de los que nosotros sacamos, recubrimos las retiradas, nos daban besos, nos abrazaban. Yo no quería yo el de besos, yo no estoy, okay. It's nice to hear that acknowledgement that there were at least some people who realized at that time just how significant the sacrifices of the Borinqueneers were. Speaking of recognition, in 2016, the Borinqueneers finally received the recognition they deserved when Congress, with bipartisan support, voted for, and President Barack Obama signed into law, the awarding of the Congressional Gold Medal to the Borinqueneers. Here's a clip of what then-President Obama had to say about them at the ceremony, awarding them the Congressional Gold Medal. Uh, they are the 65th Infantry Regime, U.S. Army. Uh, they are also known as uh, the Borinqueneers. Uh, I got to get this right. Borinqueneers. Yes. See? I practiced before I came out. Uh, segregation set them apart from their fellow soldiers, but their courage made them legendary. They earned thousands of medals for their service in Korea. Uh, today, we're going to add to those accolades by awarding these soldiers one of, the, uh, one of the country's highest civilian honors, the Congressional Gold Medal. Uh, one of them, uh, I'm sure, would be very proud to see his son James uh, end up in the White House someday. Uh, James uh, Albino has been serving in my administration since 2009, both here in the White House and at the Department of Homeland Security. I know this is a proud day for his family. Uh, Only a handful of military units have ever received this award, and only one other Hispanic American has received this award, uh, Roberto Clemente. That's pretty good company. So this is a proud uh, day for the uh, Borinqueneers and their families. It's a proud day for all those whose lives they saved and whose freedom they defended. It's a proud day for all Americans, uh, especially Hispanic Americans who've made extraordinary contributions to our country. Uh, many through their military service. So uh, on behalf of uh, the American people, uh, we want to thank 
uh, all the Borikaneers and for their ex extraordinary service. You've earned a hallowed place in our history. Uh, and to those members of the 65th Infantry Regiment who are here with us today, uh, I'd ask you to uh, please stand and raise your hand so we can recognize you for your service. That last stat at the end was especially impressive. Uh, good company for sure. Wow. I mean, it, it was pretty amazing at the time to see them recognized with such a high honor. Uh, but the Congressional Gold Medal isn't the only award the Boating Caneers received. Listen to these numbers. So we already said they received one Congressional Gold Medal. Their members have also received one Medal of Honor, 10 Distinguished Service Crosses, 256 Silver Stars, 606 Bronze Stars, and 2,771 Purple Hearts. The actions of the Borinquineers during the Korean War elevated them to iconic status, living proof of what Puerto Ricans could do when given the opportunity, showing they were second to none, inferior to no one. It goes without saying, but the Borinquineers were something special, y'all. And we owe them a debt of gratitude for everything they sacrificed for us and for Puerto Rico.